All right, so welcome you all to the first episode of my podcast, still without a title, uh, which uh, before this thing comes out anyway, I'll have a thought about that. And this thing is going to have a title. But what's most important, today we have my first guest, Jake Priestley. Hey, good to be here. Um, yeah, so you, why don't you give a small introduction of yourself? Yeah, so uh, I'm Jake Priestley. I'm a musician, uh, not at the minute based in London, but I've been working for the past three years. Um, I moved here, yeah, September 2017, just to play music full time. Yeah. Um, but I've been doing this sort of thing for good seven years now seven years um, back in Leicester but I worked as well so it was kind of the second job right um, side, side hustle yeah yeah thing. still busy with it but I thought you could get busier and sure yeah if it's a job it's amazing you know so um, yeah just, so what, what were you doing as a, as a job you said from Leicester yeah so um, I worked in a factory full time factory job yeah uh, Monday to Friday I taught at night after so I went straight to Yamaha to teach guitar in Birmingham which is a 45 minute drive. Amazing. Did so you that. were waking up in the morning, going to the factory, yeah. getting out of the factory, driving to Birmingham from Leysa, yep. teaching guitar, yep, and then driving back home. And then driving home, uh, that was my week, and then I had three function bands at the weekend. So it was just crazy, you know, you'd, you'd work seven days for, of course, yeah. I think I did it for about a year and a half, but I knew I was saving to move here. Course, that's yeah, why yeah. I did it. You, you were looking up to London as yeah, that's, that was the end that's goal, the yeah. real stage. I just took, kept my head down and just thought, I've got to do all this because I'm gonna have enough money to live here, of course. And it's not too expensive when you, yeah, when you, you by the way, you, you can totally swear on this. Oh, office. God, you amazing. can smoke, you can swear. Oh, you can do everything on it, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's no, no, no restriction, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, um, not I'm wear no, you can not, not wear a mask, like if. If, oh, you, yeah. if you if you were yeah. sensitive about that, mm. we could have worn one, but. The case is that we both <laughs> I'm, feel I, safe enough. I had a COVID test two days ago. I'm negative. All oh, right. Okay. Yeah. I didn't have one, but you have to take my word on it. <laughs> I, 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 I don't feel sick uh, by the slightest. So that's, no, and we can taste um, strong black tea. Cream, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so I did that for a bit, um, for about a year and a half. Burned me out completely, you know. I was ready to move Stressful. there. Yeah, because I knew when you got here, it's like starting your business. Yeah, I, I didn't make yeah, much definitely. money for the first six months, you know, but I knew I didn't want to get another job because it would just, I'd lose track completely. So I just kept going and going and going, doing every sort of gig, rehearsal, focused, yeah. weird auditions, yeah, for weird people. There's a lot of weird people out doing there. Doing anything, yeah. Yeah, you'll, yeah. you'll realise that when you start this. Oh man, I've, I've, I've met my uh, share, I think, of weirdos, uh, as with oh, organisers yeah. and pub owners and um, you, talent scouts, the so-called talent scouts. Yeah. And you get them, and you, you have to go through it. You know, I still do now. Like, I sometimes yeah, I mean, get weird jobs now, especially in this COVID lot of, time. A lot of like, learnings, like a lot of yeah. lessons and, yeah. and things you, to avoid in the future. And detecting when it's something's going to be wrong is a good thing to learn. Because yeah. I've, I've done that before and gone, this doesn't feel right. But then I still do it. Like, I told you, I knew it wasn't going to be right. It's like, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you just know. You, you do it because for the sake of trying, because it's always good to be optimistic and hopeful. Yeah, you do it, yeah, but definitely. Then, but then at some point, maybe you, you, you kind of wake up about things. Yeah. About certain things and be like, okay, this, no more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, I moved here. I did bass for a bit as well. I bought a bass and just learned bass because I thought, well, that's going to double my work, yeah, technically. Yeah. And it sort and of bass players are the, among the most wanted musicians. Mm. So it's, 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 it's sort of cool. work for a bit. And then, yeah. Um, from then, just get into function bands because that was the main money maker, you know. Like I had to do it. People say sell your soul for a night, and mm. if I if that can make me live, no, yeah, for the rest of the six days doing what I want, then I'll do it for one night. You know, sure, sure you won't be enjoying the stage as much as you are when you're doing your, you know, original mm. stuff. But if that pays the bill, exactly, why not? Yeah, we've, yeah. we've all got to have them sort of jobs, you know. Um, so yeah, we've been doing that for three years. And obviously, we met at open mics, and yeah, they had, by the way, yeah, this the way we. Um, and Jake, me and Jake met is that we were going to the same open mics. There's this UK open mic organizers that do used to do like open mics every day in London, and that was a great chance for to get like a 15 minute on stage and try out your songs, you know, meet with new musicians and and do stuff like that. So it was really really good before the whole uh, COVID thing. It was awesome. Yeah, you know, every, like you were there every night. I was there every night. 
that's you know, was the good uh, good group of, group of people. Yeah, yeah great. And the organizers. Community. I mean, every organizer was also an artist, mm. so they they were really empathetic towards us. I mean, yeah. like uh, I know what you go through because I'm doing the same. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And it was it was it felt like a team effort. Yeah. And not just open mics or like random musicians. Yeah. Meet. And that was UK open mic, wasn't it? Yeah. UK they were an awesome community. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. Yeah. yeah, there was similar people there every night, but. They just gave us all the chances and like the hosts pretty, were like pretty good stages as well. Yeah, like some of them, some of them are brilliant. I mean, yeah, and I kept saying to them, like, just get a monitor. I need to hear myself, you know. And you know, like that, and you learn all that when you when you when you go through this sound on stages. Yeah. Oh, so important. It's ridiculous, but yeah. I meant, I meant to that. Yeah. The, yeah. Import, the importance for the performer to hear themselves, you know, that as yeah. well. But I guess the focus was more like uh, on the event. And yeah. Tw- we'd have been twenty different musicians being on stage for ten minutes each. Yeah. You don't really care about them. <laughs> no, it's weird. <laughs> it, it's cause I feel that's what happens in, mm. in, in open mic settings. Yeah. You, you get the every, like the show is put on to the the most important thing but with everything as well but the most important thing is to make money to support the venue yeah because otherwise the venue is not able to support the organizers mm. so the musicians have nowhere to go yeah exactly so that's the whole uh, the whole thing is played around that and not around music yeah so music is part of the thing and yeah. it looks like most of it but it's actually mm. actually yeah. what goes on yeah so that that yeah for three years I've done that. You know. So what? Um, how old are you? Twenty-seven. Twenty-seven now. Uh, yeah. We the same age. And well, what? Uh, at what age did you decide to to go for this path for the music? I wanted. To, well, I, I've I've been playing since I was nine guitar, which is kind of early, but I just it is. you know completely hooked on it. And then I did college. I went to get oh, you know. 16, 17, you're not taking anything seriously. I didn't take anything seriously. Yeah. Like, people, I mean, kept, people kept I saying... I struggle to take things seriously now that I'm 27. Yeah, so like, so. exactly. <laughs> people kept saying, yeah, go to London, do this, do that. I'm like, I'll just stay around here for a bit and just like see what I can do. So I didn't, yeah. didn't realise what you can do. And people, lecturers are saying to me, like, you need to move because you've got something that you know you could you could use. I was like, yeah, I'll work it out. For ages, and I was like, I'm going to move to London. And then it took me another five years. Right. So I didn't have the balls if I'm going to be honest, okay. or the brains, or the money. So Three big components yeah. in like, making that big of a move, like changing, yeah. moving to, by yourself to another town or yeah. state or whatever. And, and yeah, I, I wouldn't have done it. I just wouldn't have done it the way I've done it now. You know, I had to have a couple of years by working in pretty shit jobs yeah, yeah. to really go around. Join oh, the club. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm sick of this now. I, I know I can do something now. There's plenty of people out there that can do it. Yeah. I'm pretty sure now I can do it. And then I was 24 and I said, right, let's do it. Um, you, you sound like you've had, um, you've had to deal and come up, come with terms with your discipline mm. and your work ethic. Yeah. And like when you felt ready to commit, I mean, you, before you moved to London, you um, you were doing that crazy life we talked about. Uh, yeah. You were going to the factory in the morning, teaching at night, and then on the weekend, instead of resting, you were playing you on stage, life, yeah. making more money, yeah. blah, 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 like to prepare for this move, me yeah. to move to London. Yeah, yeah. So you took a decision, but it wasn't like, okay, tomorrow I'm going to do this. And no. You took a big decision and decided to commit yourself to a lot, um, yeah. bef- to, to then be able to make that move. Yeah. And um, apart from the word going to bits in March this year I think that was very well thought and yeah. you delivered like yourself mm. into that do you know what I mean yeah yeah it, did you think um, oh, you said you struggled the first six months like to make any money in London yeah and stuff but do you I don't know after three years now you've gone back coming back to like here obviously a few times do you feel that um, it was worth it the like what you have thought of London before, was that true? Yeah, I, but it's worth coming back here. But worth living here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah like, definitely. Make, you know, working your ass off to save enough money to oh, then definitely, move yeah. here and keep yeah. struggling to it. Was yeah. that? Was that? Yeah, it was. It was completely so worth it because I lost. You know, you lo- I lost a lot of money in them six months, and I still did continuously throughout the three years. You know, but I was just sort of pushing it back up and going, I'm not going yet, you know, I'm yeah. not going to get this, because I didn't want, I, I appreciate people need another job to support themselves, but I planned in my head, I didn't want to put myself in that position, because yeah. I knew I'd quit, slowly, slowly fade away, 
you know, so this is why all, all that year and a half I was like, this is all, so I don't have to do this all over again. Yeah, exactly. And with this whole COVID the thing. The biggest motivator was avoiding the shit jobs. Yeah, and even though it got too hard, but it gave you all day to focus on what you're doing and practice. And But this is before I was doing my original stuff. This is when yeah. I was just being a, I don't know, just a professional musician to play in cover bands and stuff. You know, that was my focus. And that's what I wanted to excel in for about two years. You know, and it and it kind of worked. I was doing some good residencies and so and um, wedding bands and function bands, and it was great. But obviously, my mind's changed now a little bit. But you you've, you've shifted your um, your perspective. Yeah, you've got to yeah, you got to go through because we did like working with original original artists for a good I don't know how long was it six months in them open mic days where it was just constant every day. Yeah, I've seen what people are doing. Which is good, and then I seen the bad sides, and I thought, oh, let's just try and not do that, but yeah. then do that little part. You know, you learn, and of you, course, you, you, you were you were like um, you had the chance as a musician to be uh, close to people who were trying like to write their own stuff and make yeah. it by themselves, which is not something you were attempted before. No, never. But not. you've seen what they were doing, what they were trying to achieve, mm. and you're an artist yourself. You uh, have the ability of coming up with melodies and songs, so yeah. you write your own stuff as well yeah and well did you start writing your own stuff after you saw the chance of making something happen or yeah yeah i, I used to write songs like i used to write lyrics and songs for, and for, for just your own pleasure younger yeah and I, I wanted that was this is weird going back to when i moved to london that was my plan to come here and to sing and play right which you i don't know if people if people that know me could not imagine that in one bit but what you're doing is what my plan was to do like <laughs> The whole my, my was, story is a lot different than yours and yeah and but i was a big yeah. arty monkeys fan i was a big um like oasis like, fan like, yeah all this stuff and i was like right let's write some stuff and i did write some stuff and it was okay but it, i just obviously didn't do it i, right. I wasn't that comfortable doing it but um but yeah mean, these it, you've you've got to you've got to do everything by yourself don't, don't yeah. you because you, you join a, a function band the songs are there you there's a certain pathway you have to yeah. learn the songs play them that's basically it yeah and, uh, and show up, like not be late, you know, mm. all, all those important aspects as well. But it's relatively simple. It is. When you have to do it yourself, is coming up with a song and with the arrangement, and therefore decide the musicians around the arrangement. Yeah. It's, it's very, a lot of levels on, on everything you want to do. And it's weird, there's, there's more to do yeah. as an original artist, but a hell of a lot less money to make in that, in that level. Like, I could go out and do a gig. Exactly. It's, where, it's, it's exactly what you said, it's doing your own business when you're like yeah. independent artist, original artist, because you, you used to be the musician paid to play on somebody else's band, mm. and now you're going to pay musicians yeah. to play in your band. That's what I'm doing at solo. Yeah, like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, no way, no way, but yeah, yeah. I, will, I will do it. Join the club. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. There's, there's all sorts of ideas for solo artists like me and you, we can get people in, but it's so nice just to have all of the control and, yeah. you know, you haven't got to worry about anyone else at all. You know, and it, it keeps your head clear as well. If you've got all these, oh, that bassist has not learned the songs, or that drummer's not going to turn up, it just fucks with your head, and you don't yeah. need all that. You need to just it's focus. Slowing you down. Yeah, it's slowing your mental down, and relying on people in the past, I've learned the hard way, you know. But you, you, got dis you got disappointed. Yeah, and it's like, hold on a minute, I don't need to rely on anyone. I can do this, you know. Yeah. That's what you did, and that's what all these solo artists do. Yeah, you know? to, 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 I don't think you know about this, but. I don't want to like um, steal the light. This is very much what you this episode and what you can offer to people who are gonna view mm -hmm. and hopefully to give it, like a couple of advices and and stuff to on what to look out for and what to do and what to put your efforts yeah. in uh, if you want to make this happen as a musician or like original mm -hmm. uh, artist. Uh, but my my experience was when I moved to London, I had the uh, big rock star dream in mind, yeah. like. I'm from Italy, and so it was relatively easy. For you, it was maybe a train. I took a plane, it, same maybe same hours, like yeah, yeah, less, probably, less yeah. than a couple of hours. Yeah. I was here. Um, saved. I spent maybe six months saving a bit of money to move here. I knew I um, could do a job, like not a factory, but like I worked in restaurants in Italy mm -hmm. before, and so I, I had that skill. It made sense that I could get a job, pay the bills, and be in London for yeah. the opportunity, where the opportunities yeah. I thought they were, and. Obviously, they were much more here than mm. when I was. Yeah. So I moved here, and with the ability of playing the piano, I've uh, played in a few bands. But I've always uh, kept away from the money. I think yeah. <laughs> from, from the 
uh, from the function bands and the cover bands and like paid gigs. Yeah. I've, I was just uh, playing in bands that they were doing the original stuff and playing keys for them. Yeah. So after I did that for a couple of years, um, and during the first year I was super busy, I went on tour twice, which is amazing, like not big budget or anything, mm. but I went to Newcastle and France, like yeah. north of France, and that was kind of the dream uh, done for me, yeah. you know, like I've been on tour, like that's this, this is it. Yeah. But then I, I realized I'm doing somebody else's music. Like, uh, I, I write my own songs and stuff, so why not, you know, shift and mm. try to make it? It was a big, big shift, because, like, everything had to be done by myself and stuff. Yeah. But it was much more rewarding, I think. Every yeah. little accomplishment by myself, yeah. it, it felt much more than, like, going on tour with, with yeah. somebody else. And, and so that played a huge, huge role for me. And as a motivator, like, keep doing this mm. this way, because that's... Um, that's the best way for your happiness. Like, yeah, I, I definitely got like that. Happy. Yeah, so um, I, I was I was I was playing stuff that I didn't want to play. Yeah, yeah. And I was exactly. like waking up going, why? Like, why is that happening? I like, I get the whole cover stuff, like the the big wedding stuff. Like, I don't mind doing, you know, because it is. Oh, I've still got to live. You know, I've still got to be able to pay for everything. So yeah. I just I do that. But then I was doing a lot of original stuff, for the sake of it. I think in my head I wanted to play original stuff, but I didn't trust myself. I didn't trust my own music. To do well, oh, so I was like, let's yeah. just live in someone else's shadow for a bit and play. And then obviously, when I started writing my stuff, I was like, this ain't bad actually. Like, this could happen, but it's yeah. confidence as well. Like, because you work with with, with other musicians, yeah. Like, you can, you don't. I, mean, I don't know. Like, you don't seem. You don't come across as a very judgmental guy. Mm. So you probably don't judge like straight on the spot when you're playing with somebody. But then in your head, you you kind of think, well. I, I could be doing that. Mm. Like he's, he's trying, she's trying, they're doing it. I could be doing the same. I, yeah. I, you know, the insecurity um, that you build yourself. Yeah. And I've, I've, I'm a master of insecurities, I think. Yeah. And be able to... Professionals, like, eh? Yeah. <laughs> so, we, should, we should get paid for that, then we'll be pretty rich. Yeah, to be like, <laughs> maybe to, to, to put down something. It's like, yeah, I yeah. wrote this song, but it's probably not... Yeah, well, I'll keep it to myself, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, that's the hardest thing. Like, that's so going, hard. People are going, I've played, my first gig I played in February... Yeah. of my own stuff I'm absolutely welled through my songs like lightning speed because I thought oh, no one's going to want to listen to it I've heard it a thousand times because I've wrote the damn thing yeah. and I've practised it for god knows how long and I just absolutely oh, I just demolished these I didn't yeah. demolish them but they just went through like, vroom, so like that's, that's next song and I was like I had all these intentions that like, I'll play this like nice and slow and I'll take my time no way I was on stage I was like I need to get off this stage I let, I let because, me I, because I was like <laughs> You don't need to don't worry about my songs. It's fine. I'm just, I'm just here as a guitarist, but obviously that's the part where you learn. Like, don't rush it. Everyone, that's the first time people have heard your songs. Like, they're going to look at everything. They're going to look at the chord movement, the melody, you, the way you play it. But yeah. you know so the way you project yourself. And you know how you play. You know how it sounds. But you, you've got to appreciate in your room, and that, yeah, it, it kind of changes in front of an audience. Oh my! And I just oh, you should have you should have heard these songs. There, I can't even. I can't. Even, I can't play them that fast now. I don't know how I did it, but it was just like. All the way I through. I can resonate with that so much. It's ridiculous. Because so much. Why? I was. I've always been a rusher uh, on the plane. I don't know if you've um, seen that movie uh, Whiplash. Yeah, the, the yeah, the, so the, one, yeah. The, the guy was like, "You're not not quite my tempo. You're mm, rushing yeah, in yeah, and yeah. stuff." I, I used to be like a big time rusher, <sighs> just to get through it because I don't know insecurities and freaking out and shitting myself. Basically. Yeah, like on a personal uh, thing uh, and. But but that this thing comes to mind, like Ringo Starr is obviously arguably one of the best performers ever because he's, he's been in the Beatles. But what he says is he gets nervous be, before every show, mm -hmm. like he never lost that. Mm -hmm. And so the moment where he has to walk on the stage and get to the drum set or to the mic or you know, whatever mm -hmm. he's doing that night, something that he was never be able to overcome is the emotion yeah. of it. So he's always run. Like it starts, it starts walking, and then it's uh, just yeah, gone because yeah, it's yeah, gonna rush yeah. it. And and so for like, then then I get it. Like, he's, he's fucking ring star. It's it's gonna go on tempo, mm. and he's not gonna rush things. Yeah. When he gets to that, but yeah. the it's excitement thing, yeah, it's supposed to probably never go away, and yeah. people handle it differently. You've got yeah, and that's the thing. That's the thing is that you you learn to handle it. You learn yeah. to control it. Like, I'm still going through this. You you, you don't of... want to, to keep you from doing yeah. you know, what, what you want to do. I mean, yeah, like, the stuff I'm playing as well, it's the hardest thing I can play. It's at the top of my ability. So why am I making it harder? By rushing the thing. <laughs> I'm making it sound 
and feel harder. Like I'm making yeah. my life harder by thinking it's going to be. It's, I think it's making my life easier, but it's making my life a lot, hell of a lot harder when I'm on stage yeah. going. But I've started this tempo now. I can't back down, and there's a hard bit coming up now, and I couldn't do it. It's slow. So I'm going to do it now. You know what I mean? It makes it's, and you panic and there's some yeah it's unnecessary. It makes in, in yeah it makes it doesn't help you at all and that's I'm still learning I'm still learning that because I'm new to this original stuff like all the all the function band stuff I can you know I've been Mastered there it. and you can Mastered see it, it and you can see oh like, that's no good I've done really good bands and really shit bands before but this thing is completely brand new but I'm using all my knowledge from what I've learned of course yeah. over the course of what I don't know eight years you've, you've had a chance to uh, watch what people were doing so avoid mistakes that they were yeah. making. And taking the good from it, I think yeah. it's absolutely brilliant. And I love your stuff. I, oh, I mean, I've always enjoyed seeing you play because, mm. to me, as a music fan, I can and I enjoy watching you play because I can tell you're in your element. Yeah. Like you're in the zone. Like you're not maybe even supposed to do that. But yeah. You really, really want to do it. Yeah. You're uh, and and that shows a lot on stage mm. and the way you project yourself and stuff. Uh, whereas maybe some other performers, you know, the mics especially, they go there for different reasons, yeah. and for like the spotlight and everything, and you can you can tell, yeah. and the music gets affected. Yeah, like that. yeah, definitely. But um, your 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 playing was absolutely amazing every time. Uh, thank and, you. Like you were playing for singers and stuff. Yeah. And I, I I've noticed so many times where like your playing, your quality playing was so much higher than the actual performance oh, of the, the singer. Yeah. And because yeah, 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 you. Can, you were the the guitar. You were the thing keeping the show up mm. most of the times. What I, that I remember of. But yeah. I'm a very critical and judgmental person mm. on the abilities and stuff. So yeah. I might be wrong, probably wrong. But yeah, the whole like mic thing. Like people were saying to me because I well you you'd have seen like sometimes there'd be six singers a night. Yeah, and I'd be playing for it. And I'd choose to do it. I wasn't I wasn't being paid for it. I was not heavily made from doing this. Yeah. And, but it wasn't about that for me. It was about. Obviously, I, like, I enjoy playing these singers, but it's about making me better. Yeah. And I just kept quiet going, I'm oh, just doing it for you, because you're helping me. I'm not doing this for you, really. Yeah. It's not like, oh, you need a guitarist. I'll, yeah, you know. I'm going to struggle and help you out. Okay. And I need some money for this. But no, I was completely like, yeah, I'll do it, because it makes me on stage a lot longer. Boom. Exactly. If I'm on six, night, six times a night, sometimes five days a week, I'm only going to get better. Surely, and I'm sure you know. you've heard about the ten thousand hours yeah. uh, rule. So yeah. you know, do more it. more chances to to get closer to that ten thousand. And I know this is this is this is a thing I've remembered I, and learned. I know musicians now, not obviously before this whole thing happened, but um, that wouldn't leave the house without getting paid for them for, the, for what they do, which is fair enough. I agree with it. I can see it being a job. Okay, I, yeah. and I completely get like you have to respect how much you're worth as well. You've got to respect your worth. And all that, but sometimes you have to do things for the experience and for the possibility of anything happening. Yeah, I don't. I I used to be like that for a little bit, and it. I'm not that sort of person. People can do that. People can get paid for every single thing they do, which is great. Yeah, it's. But it's it, not about that all the time. Yeah, and it all, all, also you know? I think it comes down to be an ability of everybody of each individual to sell themselves mm. and how well are you like are you marketing yourself as a yeah. brand and yeah. as an artist and stuff i personally have struggled and keep struggling to do that mm. because i might be familiar with my like strength and, and weaknesses yeah. but i'm not like i haven't i've never been able to actually sell myself as like you know pitch yeah, <laughs> my, yeah. my 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 set and yeah, my, yeah. My, my services I, it's always been like this. What I'd like to do. This is what I love doing, and so yeah. And that doesn't work all the time because a professional often speaks as how much is this? Like mm. this is business and stuff. And I probably and for, for for us and for me especially, I think it's it's the enjoyment of it is yeah. Really, like that's the most important thing. That money always comes after it. I yeah I I, I agree with you. And it, it'll happen. You know, if we go if we keep going and going. If I keep doing them, something will happen. You know, I'll get something out of it. It's just, it's a long game, but you've got to be yeah. in it. You've got to be in it for the long, long haul, really. And yeah, I could have probably charged people, but it's a fucking open mic. You know, these are not. You've not got to think about not, not professionals. It and, it's like most, you know, most of them. And I'll be if I didn't do that, I'd be sat at home playing guitar on my own. No, fuck that. I'd rather just play with people. And if I can afford to do, it, if I was living on the streets. Of course, you'd be. All right, I need, prioritizing. I need. Yeah, that's an extreme level. But I wasn't. So what's my excuse? 
But if I want to play with people, I have, I have to go and play and I learn all these songs every night. It was a great job, unpaid job. Yeah. You know, and I made, like, before lockdown, it, I made the money at the weekends. Fine by me. Just what, what, what we're doing this week. I used to have a little rotor of what we're doing in that week. I'm not getting paid a penny for it. But I've got paid enough. I've got enough money. It's fine. This, this How is much exactly money do you need? The, yeah. You know? This is exactly what putting the work in. You don't, you don't need that much money. Like, really, you don't. This is, I mean, it's not in Europe anymore, but this used to be the most expensive city in Europe to live in. Mm. So let's, let's get on to some practical and really hands on things. And if, you, if you're up for it, to throw some uh, figures as well. So how much do you think um, a, a creative a musician or a, like a creative person needs to make in order to live? Not just survive, but to live in the city. You're talking monthly? Yeah. Um, I mean, depends where you live. Well, um, let's say you want to move to London, so you're up for anything. Like, you, you don't know the areas. Um, and you're, 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 you don't even want to live in the centre, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, because when I came, I moved to Essex, <laughs> which is stupid, because I, I actually spent way more on travel getting into London. So Essex is two hours away? Uh, Essex, the only thing with, when I lived in Essex, it was about a 45 minute walk to the train station, and it was completely, I've made a massive mistake, but I think, if you're pulling in... And why, why did you choose that? Is, because that, um, naivety, I thought, wow, well, it's cheap. Well, right, yeah, okay. It's cool. cheap, so, so... It's cheaper than London then. Yeah. And, for that, and then spend more time on the train, I don't mind. But you spend more money. And, yeah, living that far out wasn't great, you know. Um, but it depends, it just depends. if I've always lived sort of out south London. I've never lived where, where I've never lived here before. Well, I've, this, I've always I mean, lived around zone five, zone six. This is oh okay, five or six. Yeah. We're talking like that. Oh yeah, yeah. Out of the centre. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, because uh, for, for for me personally, having to have a full time job, because well, I I made the decision of not playing anybody else's songs. Mm. Probably wrong, probably wrong decision or stuff, but it was right for me. Yeah. And I've always had like a full time job, so to be able to not lose too much on the commute, uh, lose much time on the commute, I live uh, fairly close to the center but it's that like, this is quite a kind of nice equilibrium for me because it's zone three so it's not very centered uh, I, I feel like when I get home I feel like I get away from the madness of the city mm -hmm. so that plays yeah quite a big part as well and it's obviously cheaper than the, the center yeah I mean I remember I, I, live, I used to live in Watford Watford oh, I think okay. I think I every gig every mic I think we first met I was like yeah, I travel from Watford every day to do this and all that sort of thing. And it's, you know, it's 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 a long commute and it's a, it's a, it's it can be hard. But I'd rather that's me. I'd rather yeah. live out and spend. I've got songs to learn. More than <laughs> you know, if I've got an hour and a half trip, yeah. I've got to work out these songs before I get there. And sometimes I work them out in the toilet. In, yeah, with you'd see me like usually in open mics going. Uh, you want to come and learn the songs in the toilets, and they're like, "How are they doing, doing it in the back?" Yeah, every time because I didn't. Not have, it. I I, I um, totally get it. Um, but that was just the way it is. Like, I, I could have done what you do. You, you, you use the time on the, the commute. You just you don't just, you know, travel and yeah, can yeah, hate every second in there. Yeah, Maybe I used to kind of, I used to kind of enjoy it, you know, because um, I had so much to do as well, and I so much, and then just thinking time just to go right. What should I do there? What yeah, it's do it's a great thinking. It's a great thinking. Uh, I love commuting. Spot. Yeah, like, I love uh, it. On a bus, it's it's my favorite thing. Um, yeah, but yeah, it, it it can be quite hard and stressful, but depending on how you take it and how yeah. you use your time, obviously. But going back, going back really to the question on like earnings, um, obviously it's, it depends where you live and what you what you classes live in. Yeah, because I know people have expensive tastes and all this stuff and massive things and all this crap. But the best, like, yeah. yeah, if you don't have to do that, like I was obviously it was different for me when I moved here because I had money saved up, so I wasn't even making money. I was just going down. But uh, you you could survive on not a lot to be fair, I think. True. Just depends what sort of person you are. If you if you're someone that locks yourself in the room and writes songs all day, you don't need much money to be yeah, fair. Yeah, yeah. But if you need to go out and have drinks there and have dinner there and have and buy some shoes on the way back, then you'll need a bit more. Yeah. <laughs> you know no, what I mean? yeah, abs absolutely. <laughs> I totally agree. I've I've always tried um, and live with as little as I can. Mm. So I believe with um, no money aside. 
because uh, that's how I did it. Like I came here with the right money just to move. Yeah. And then if you don't find the job, money's gonna run out. So yeah. I probably I, I didn't plan well enough like as you mm. did. But my situation was kind of um, urgent. Of like uh, like my personally, I needed a different environment from the one I was in. Yeah. Very quickly. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. it was toxic and it was um, not. It was doing me a lot more harm yeah. like, than... So you had to get out as soon as... So I, yeah, yeah. I, had, I had to be quick. Yeah. So I had, when I moved, I had, I had the big focus on music and stuff, but obviously the career and spending 50 hours a week in a restaurant and doing that job dragged away not only time but energies yeah. and, and, yeah. and stuff, obviously. But I think um, without money aside, a grand a month, it's enough to yeah. live in London. And a grand a month is... I mean, I, th I think the lowest salary average that yeah. there is. Yeah. I have not become videos in like the in this country yeah. or anything, but it's fairly easy to make a grant. Yeah, yeah. So that's enough if you don't require dinners and hangouts yeah. and all the and you normal people stuff. You yeah, you've got to sacrifice a few things, you know, to do something like this. You have to and then it's almost like but then you should want to. Yeah. You know, I want to do. I like. I've sacrificed some things in the past, not going to things because I prefer to practice or prefer to, I don't know, write or something, or just gone to train for two hours to a gig that doesn't pay me. Yeah. You you should want to do that. Yeah. That sacrifice sounds like a negative word, and it is. It's a stupid example. I went out for beers two days ago because it was my mate's birthday, but I I never go out. Yeah. It's something that I didn't have to give up. Like I gave up. Yeah. Because it's such a waste of time as well. Hmm. See, I, I'm kind of different. When I want to, I do, and if you know, what I mean, I, I sacrifice a lot daily anyway to do to, to put the hours in. But yeah. I can I can go out for a drink or two if if I can afford it. You know, then back at work, like it is dangerous because I you'd get into that routine of open mics. You know, you're talking like five six pints a night all week. That's a lot of beer to spend. That's it's, a lot of money. It's a lot of money. And the next day, it's obviously the your... health <laughs> yeah. aftermath yeah. as well. It takes you, it takes you a few hours in the morning to like fucking okay, now I feel alright. That's wasted out. Like I obviously I don't regret it, but could have been productive. I could have used them two hours to write a new song or to master something that I had to wait two hours for, and then it just sends you all day in a spiral. But I did it, and I won't do it much again. Yeah. You know, but you know, don't worry about it. Just make sure, yeah, if you do it, you know, like you will learn from it. You know, I I learned from it just the COVID. I like this thing. I was like, oh, I can't do it anymore. That's actually kind of good. <laughs> I, got stuck, I got stuck in this cycle for a bit, yeah. And it made me think, oh, I don't need to do that anymore. So going forward, it's way more... Embracing change. Yeah, way more time spent, you know, which is good. But yeah, I don't think... The money thing is important, and I appreciate people in such different positions. Like Some people like me come with money, saved up from their jobs. Yeah. And some people like you like have to go immediately... And then you do the it. Urge you do it your way. of going and different, you know, situations. You do and it stuff. your way, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you have to be yourself, and yeah. self-awareness plays a big role in everything, obviously. Yeah, because I'm one of these people that if yeah, I know if, yourself, if I got a full-time job, if I had to, I could I can lose focus so quickly. I can't really. I got. That's what happened in, in in Leicester. I got these jobs and I wasn't doing it seriously, and I thought I'm too comfortable now. Yeah. I've got in a comfort zone, and yeah. I, I, I didn't want to be comfortable. Because it doesn't get you anywhere. Comfort kills you. Comfort zone, yeah. It's so dangerous. It's so good. It's so appealing. Everybody's saying like, it, 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 it's a very... It's so appealing. Famous, yeah. I think it's human nature. Like, we like to have comfort. comforts and, you know... Some um, some ways, but obviously for... Uh, like, creativity is... That doesn't doesn't flourish. No. In, in no, comfort. It no, it does just It's just what it is. And and struggle and pain and all of that, um, they, they're often the big producers of mm. art mm. and like inspiration and stuff so yeah yeah you've um, I think you've covered a lot about that uh, yeah. and the most important thing you said is probably he, you have to want it yeah it's like nobody's pushing anybody to like have dreams or go mm. after in, you know crazy things yeah so if you have it or have ambitions and stuff then back it up with one really wanting to do it and having to do not your favorite thing all the time. Yeah, 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 of course. That's, yeah, people live Personally, in I struggled with it. I've struggled with that a lot. Mm -hmm. I, but I've, I've always 
I, with the lack of guidance I had, which we can, we can overshadow, but I've always been a the decision making guy. Like I've always been very sure when to make a decision, mm. and I, I, I've quite never dragged things along because oh I, I need to keep this job. Because it's, no, I don't want to do this anymore, so I'm not going to do this. Anymore. Mm. First time I did, I left. I my high school dropped out. I didn't finish my education like in the normal way. Then mm. I got some online qualifications and stuff uh, later on because I felt that I needed but I didn't finish high school I was yeah. like I'm not gonna go to a university get a normal job I don't want to do that mm. so I better save it, save money and move to London because that's where I can try and be what I want to be so how old were you when you moved here then? Uh, in 20 I would just just turn 20 oh, okay. a week after turning yeah. 20 I've left school at 19 mm. I, was, I wasn't a great student like yeah, it's not that I gave up a huge freaking <laughs> lawyer career or anything yeah. And for six months, I lived as a fucking rascal, um, trying to save enough money, saved enough to uh, put a bond on a, on a room and pay a, a month rent on a room in London, and then started from just looking for jobs. Yeah. Five days after, I was um, washing dishes in an Italian restaurant, and I could pay the rent. So it all started from that. Yeah. A year after, I had already been on tour twice. And then the shift of perspective change is like, okay, I've done it. Because I said I was going to do it and mm. I did it in less than a year. It was not stadiums and I could have gone on. Mm. But then I decided, well, I've got my own songs. Maybe I can allocate all of my free time on that. Mm. And that's what I did. And, you know, obviously life and whatever, you change, you grow, uh, you learn so many yeah. things and stuff. After all that shit, I think, like, I, I'm still, I found, I've, I've, all, all the struggle was able uh, was um, was helping me to be able to move all the useless stuff aside, mm. and now I'm left with the pure enjoyment of what I do. Yeah. It's like produ um, writing a song, um, going in the street to bask for a couple hours, going on stage for ten minutes, uh, and, and and doing it every once in a while. Fucking love it. Mm. But I've found my, I think I found my uh, not comfort but my balance mm. of like stuff that I'm willing to do. To get the gratification of music yeah, and stuff, yeah. and then stuff that I want to do. Yeah, and I I've, I feel pretty good at right now. Obviously, I had because well, I changed my perspective really recently. But uh, I I was struggling big time until last week because COVID changed everything. Mm -hmm. And seeing big bands like the Libertines uh, doing gigs, socially distanced gigs, that really scared me. And yeah. I was good more of this because more like music, but. And I don't feel like that anymore. It's it's I love live music and stuff, and it's been really really compromised now. Yeah, it's gonna go back eventually in a while. But for my situation personally, I'm gonna let that affect my my uh, my yeah. journey and be like, okay. I mean, <laughs> I've got these comparisons like that's the Beatles that stopped doing gigs because they couldn't hear it themselves yeah, in yeah. 64, 65 yeah. or something, and focus on the music. So I'm thinking about my move a bit like that, like it's just put my focus on there and all the energies for attracting an audience and going to play live i'm just going to give that up and use move the until energy. it comes back and until you know it's 100 percent. yeah yeah until i don't have to um network three months to get a single gig mm. which uh, again it's an excuse it's me complaining um mm. because the situation is like this it's things that i cannot control it's just me deciding not to do things yeah anymore. yeah um not not pointing fingers or anything but, but just, now just be self-aware with me and be like but yeah, now, right. like, mm -hmm. like I've done, like I did, when you, when you make a decision, you, now you can focus on doing what you want to do, you know, yeah. not just sort of floating about and going, well, I don't know if I want to do it, but I'm going to sort of do it anyway. And it doesn't go, you don't do it to its fullest effort. Now you know what to do, you'll put 100% into that. Yeah. You know, and you'll probably get, you'll probably see a lot more progression now, you know what I mean? Which, probably, which hopefully, because, yeah. like, once you've got something on your, like, some, you need that certain straight thing on your mind. Like, people sort of float about and go, oh, I'll release this song in six months and then I'll just try and write another one. It's like, fucking hell, like, you live in the dream world. Like, yeah, I've, 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 I've never understood <laughs> you know what I mean? that. I've, I've come across a lot of people that, oh man, I really want to do this, I want to, uh, you know, want to make it in the music and stuff. And then I ask simple questions like, how many songs do you have? Mm. And they're like, they're like a bit um, shocked. Songs? Yes. Songs? songs? I'm I'm sort of writes them for me. I, I, I started um, two, maybe, I, yeah. I started, and I'm like, so what do you want to do? It's like, cause, I mean, write like, for me personally, writing songs and performing, 
that's that, that's that, that was my goal. Performing has been I mean affected a lot. Yeah. But writing songs, nobody's keeping me from that. It's exactly what I enjoy and, and do, and and the songs are the material and the starting point for a career or a, yeah. a discography. You know, it's, it's about the music, the, yeah. the songs. So there's a lot of people that uh, a lot of even good musicians or singers and stuff that want it. They follow the light of the glamorous things, and but they don't have anything in the backpack. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah, I know what you mean. They don't have to get there. They, yes. And then when they get there, the industry kind of shapes them. And yeah. if they got a couple of things that works, then maybe something yeah. happens. Well, I'm still trying to figure out how to get there. Like I, I don't, I don't know anything. I can't give advice on that. But like we were saying, like earlier, like get the song sorted first. You know, don't worry about everything else. Everything else will come after. Like I'm, you know, I'm not a model. I'm not taking photos. I've done in a, that in a big massive mistake. duffel coat with Timberlands on, with I don't know, a really nice hat on or something. You know, sitting on the I, bridge. I don't do that. But yeah. I don't. I know. I know for a fact I won't need to do that. But the songs, the, the, get the songs, get the yeah. performance, the, your brand will come after, you know, don't worry about that just yet, it's not about that, you know. That's Write a great, songs. great fucking advice, I should have listened to this advice a year ago or something. Yeah, I but should have, like, yeah. I've, 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 I've made, the, I've, I'm, I'm guilty of making that mistake. Yeah. Uh, since I've always struggled to sell myself, I've made the stupid investment of be like, let's get some, um, like, uh, professional quality photos and stuff so that I can promote my gig and stuff. Now that didn't work. Like with me, it didn't work. The word goes to shit as well, but I believe that didn't work. So it's really, it's really, really true what you're saying. It's like, it does focus on what matters. And yeah. what matters is the music, the and, songs. And like the videos and the, and the photos do, they do matter, you know, after everything's after been done. Like I got this music video done and I got some pictures done. You have to. You have to still do it. You can't just live like a. By the way, the, mis- play, the plague, which is on on YouTube, the yeah. video, brilliant. Oh yeah, I'm so. The happy production, with the, video. the studio was really, really good. Yeah, he was amazing. He's doing my video tomorrow as well. The editing is it's crazy. I know. Man. It's it's. It's so good. Really cool. But um, that and that came after you know because uh, that was a mastered. Uh, I'm mine to the mastered piece. You know, I yeah. mixed it. I, well, produced uh, produced it with my friend. You know, and all these things. Your friend James. Friend- uh, my producer was Joey. Joey. Yeah, who you was going to work right. with. Yeah, he does my he does my audio. Amazing, amazing stuff. But all that comes after. Of course, you've yeah. got the song. You don't like. Oh, you you have visions of things like. Of course, you do when you write stuff. But people get too excited and just go. Oh, here's a picture of a page. <laughs> and it's like what? What do you mean? I don't know what you mean. It's just it, it, to me. It's and I've I've been there and I've tried to do these before. I'm like. What are we doing that for? Right. Just write your songs and then just slowly, slowly get it round. Do you know what I mean? It's I hear you so loudly. Like, yeah. So much. So much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People. Pers- I hope, I hope the, this that can help uh, other musicians that are struggling to and putting their efforts and energies into the things that don't matter. Yeah. Not uh, saying my songs are tra- uh, going to change the world, but you, some people out there have got songs like that. But please just focus on the songs yeah. first. That's the point. All you have to do, and then yeah. everything comes after, you know. Like, I don't know, like this. It's, it's, I think there's a g- single greatest piece of advice yeah. can, can be given to. Um, there's too, yeah, there's too many dreamers out there going, like, sh- just, oh, look at, oh, I love that photo of me, look at my pal. What about your fucking song, mate? Where's that gone? I, mean, and, oh, you, I you, absolutely you, agree with that. I've seen it so many times, it's like, oh, I don't care. I've, I've done like two years of um, recording myself doing covers and putting it out there. And I've, it's always been mic free. I've always and, and like not a huge presentation or a setting going on because the, the the focus was how good am I mm. and the song. Yeah. And that was the, the the only thing. And then I made the mistake of like uh, going fancy for like uh, pictures and stuff, and that didn't produce anything. Like mm. that didn't actually change. It doesn't work. Yeah. And in and the thing, you think that works because it's so much advertised. And there's some reckless, reckless business people out there, and they push you and um, like fake compliment you just to get your money. Mm. So yeah. that's that's the thing that I was falling into very easily. Yeah. And I've wasted the money thinking, oh, I'm going to do this because that's the ticket for that. Yeah. These people, pre- like those people, presented it to me that way. You know, use this promotion and you go to the next level. <laughs> I got use it. this and then like 
I got a message on Instagram about the plague saying, oh, this is, a, this is great. Well, I think I messaged them and then they said, oh, yeah, we'll put it on our playlist or whatever, like IGTV or something like that. Right. And like, they were like, $10 or $15. And I'm yeah. like, no, I don't want to. And then message, 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 like, please, please, please. Oh, like, yeah. Begging me. I'm like, fucking get a grip. Like, and that's all and they're out there. You for. have no idea how many pages are actively doing that. Like, doing that. And but people will fall for it, and people have, of course. I've, I have, I think I have, before I understood it actually, that it doesn't work, I think I've paid three or four of those. Yes. Because I, I, I use hashtags, so I put stuff out there and stuff, and through the hashtags, they track you down, and they find you, and they, you know, they invade you with DMs. And yeah. It feels cool as well because it feels like something's happening. Because I put the video there because of that, and I get responses, so I think I'm starting to yeah. get on the down to business. But it's just not. It's just a random person yeah. that thinks he can get a few bucks off artists. Yeah. See, I've got the odd one where they've me and have been said, I'll put it on the playlist. Um, but obviously, due to what's happening, obviously at this time of the year, like um, I'm struggling to finance it. So, would you be able to donate to me? And then you you do that. I did that. I donated, like it was either five pounds, seven pounds, fifty pounds, but you can tell it's genuine as well. It's not just yeah, like yeah, yeah. a load of emojis and these weird fonts that you see all the time. It's like that's not a person. Oh yeah. And like, I won't put it on unless you pay me. No, they sort of said I'll put it on for you, but could you donate to it? And I see it go on, then you donate to them. Look, you know, that's how it, that's how it works. That's how you should do it's it. It's easy, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. Like going back way to the start of this conversation, detecting bullshit is a, you need Oof. to be able to do that. Yeah. You know? There is so much. Yeah, and. I love London, you know, I love working here, I think it's an amazing place, but so are the people that, producers, the producers, I've heard some stuff before, I'm not naming their names, so I, don't, I, don't, I don't know the, the person who did it, but I've heard some, oh, like literally a thousand pound a song production, and someone, some daft, like not some daft, some poor person has paid it, Yeah. and I've listened to it and gone, what do you want, that is a thousand pounds, he's not spent a thousand minutes on that. Well, oh, um, right. You know, and yeah, that's they do. Good people so. in London, people anywhere in the world now. They overpay, try to overpay for it. shit because you know, they fall into the trap of quality, like more expensive, so more quality. Yeah. But mm. and you like that is the case usually. Like everything, like my guitars are expensive, my pedals are expensive because they're amazing things. Yeah. You know, all these things, and you get conditioned to go, I spend more, I get more. Get, yeah, yeah, it's but true. some of these people... And with, with music, it's usually like that, but because good studios are much more expensive than bad studios, mm. but there's a lot of expensive, not good ones. Yeah. And, and, and it's also down to the producer, what kind of music he deals with, yeah. and a lot of stuff. Personally, I've been crippled by the... the, the, the I don't know, I was fear of perfectionism in, on one side and mm. I don't know all my insecurities on the other but I, I've put out my first single as a solo artist like three singles with the band like three years ago and nothing happened but uh, on the 29th of September I put out my first single yeah. and it's 10 years like I've been writing songs for 10 years after 10 years I felt uh, like ready enough to put this out there and I recorded the piano Four years ago, yeah. Uh, the other instruments like two years ago, and then uh -huh, I yeah. and then I did the voice like recently wow. and put it out there again. So on that song, I spent honestly twenty five quid for the master, and just for the master and everything else, I didn't spend anything on, because for me it was I, I start I don't know but I start with working on demos and stuff. Mm. A lot of people write a song maybe on acoustic and be like, okay, let's get to the studio, get this down, producer add some piano, and the whole song is done. But I, I think it's not enough, you know. No. It's a, a song written on acoustic, uh, or for me, I write songs imagining, you know, not orchestras necessarily, but arrangements. A full arrangement, yeah. And I, I have the thing of not being alone on stage, but yeah. surrounded by musicians and stuff. So yeah. that, that. Uh, and you, you'll get off. It's a horror stories with producers going, "Yeah, I'll put this little trap beat on for you." Why? It's like, yeah. Why? I. If I wanted that, I could have literally done that myself. Like, there's so many phonies out yeah. there that just they take they they literally take the piss out of some people. They don't have a clue, like naivety. You know, like people right. that are just starting this industry like, as original artists in this big city that probably moved here from a different country or a different culture or just anything. I've seen it so many times, right. and I've said to these the artists, I'm like, you've been royally fucked up the arse yeah. by these people, and they don't give a shit. No, of course, it yeah. sounds dreadful. 
And I'm like, I feel bad for them, you know, because yeah. I could give them producers' names that I work with that are not going to take, but they're musicians. Yeah. You know, the, the, the guy that I work with is a musician. The real deal, yeah. You know, they're not just someone that's got enough money to have a massive Mac and some green lights in the background. Yeah. You know, honestly, this is what these people are like, and I'm so passionate about people not getting to it for self because it is damaging. Yeah. It doesn't, it actually yeah. mentally gets you. And uh, to going towards the end of this, um, mm. the, the podcast, which I'm super grateful that you did, and yeah. I think we've covered some pretty in, important stuff. Mm. Um, and yeah, um, the, towards the end, how, uh, how the bro like we've, we've established that the music industry is pretty broken. Mm. How much does this broken industry affect, affects the, um, like dreams of whatever guy, a 20, 18 year old that wants to do it? Do you think the industry is responsible for not, for a lot of people not pursuing it or? I've I think so, yeah. It's okay. starting to get to the point of... Is it safe to say that? People are starting to think it's impossible. You know, we right. like we've said before, and, and it's, it's not far from it. I'm telling you that, it's not easy, but it, it's, it's not far from impossible, but people are quitting before they've even started. Right. You know, they'll, they'll, they'll do, like, I don't know, a year of something, and it, it takes longer than that, yeah. you know? Okay, so and, and, and it's a little bit of luck, but... I, yeah, I think it's starting to affect people's work ethic, work ethic, discipline, ambitions, because it is a hard thing to do. Yeah, you know, <laughs> it's like, a um, bad career choice. In, yeah, it's in terrible. Right? Yeah. Don't do it. <laughs> you know, but yeah, I, if you're not ready for it. Yeah, but I think yeah, you need some, you need to have some brains. You can't go in there blind because you you will get took the piss out yeah. of. Yeah, and you and you will, and you you won't want to do it then. You know, have like take your time, but learn first just just be quiet and just learn you know that's what i did and balls brains be quiet learn that's what you and need. work your ass off yeah and, and yeah put some money aside exactly because you got you always want them yeah and just be very careful of people it's not a friend it's not an amazingly friendly industry sometimes no, it is not, not people all. like you like close friends you know it's amazing what you can do Wait, but there's, there's, there's there's some real people uh, yeah the, but there's uh, some I'm arrogant enough to define myself as a real person. Like, yeah. You, you oh, no, of course, yeah. But there's some idiots out there that will take yeah. you for a ride. But <laughs> don't do it. You know, just just think about it. Don't get too excited when someone compliments you. That's the good thing. That's the thing to do. Like, because people will know. Oh, if I compliment them, they will like me. Then, just appreciate the compliments. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. Like true ones. Right. But just look past that. You know, because people get excited really and, and just see yeah. the money. That's like they want. They just want your money. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes, anyway, but just try and find the genuine people. That's awesome. what I can say. Jake, thank you so much for um, this. Yeah, for the that was awesome. Conversation um, on this very real note, not pessimistic, but this real note that we closed on. Why don't you play something for us? Let's do it. I'm gonna probably play the plague. Which is my newest song. And it's out everywhere. There's a video on YouTube. Yeah, video on YouTube. It's uh, on Spotify, every platform. Spotify, Apple, Deezer, all them sort of things. Uh, JakePriestley.com and just find it on there. Um, got a new song coming out in a few weeks. So yeah, give me a follow and a share, whatever. And we'll do the plague. Ooh. Ready? Take it away. Let's go. <laughs>
great. Ah, thank you. Well, we've got lots into that, isn't it? Thanks again, Jake. No, that's buddy. Yeah, no worries. Amazing.